In today's lesson, we're going to be answering the question, what is in our digestive system? And what happens if we don't get enough of the things that we need? And how can we check what foods contain which nutrients? Welcome to What's Your Question. I'm Mr. Watts. Let's go. Objectives then are placed right here. They are to recall the different parts of the digestive system, describe some health issues uh, with a, if you have them for, that you can get from an unhealthy diet, and also explain how we can test food to check its nutrient content. We're looking at the different food tests uh, at the end of this lesson to check that out. We're going to look at the parts of the digestive system, what they're all called, and we're going to look at um, what happens to our body when we either have too much or not enough food in our diet. Here, I've placed an image of the digestive system. There are some labels there. I'd like you to pause the video here for a few seconds and see if you can throw in any of those labels and work out what those labels should be. Um, pause here, and we'll go through what the answers are afterwards. Great, so we're gonna start at the top right of the image uh, that points inside the, the mouth. So that's the top left, actually. We'll start there. So the top left is the mouth. Uh, and the top right is pointing to the salivary glands uh, at the bottom at the back of the mouth. As we move down, the next label is the esophagus, uh, followed by the large intestine, the rectum and the anus. And moving up the left hand side at the end of the, append of the intestines, they've got the appendix, uh, they've got the small intestines, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the liver, the esophagus, and we're back round to the mouth again. Those are the parts of the digestive system. When we talk about the direction that food travels through this and what happens in those parts then, you need to be aware that we start off at the mouth, obviously, where our food is gonna be chewed up. The salivary glands here release enzymes like amylase, which can break down starches. These are the biggest molecules that we're gonna to need to break down. Uh, so amylase is released here to break down those large molecules and make them smaller. We're then gonna go down the esophagus, the food tube, uh, that connects our mouth to our stomach uh, and the acid and enzymes in there are going to be mixed together by the stomach. Uh, it contracts and relaxes and swashes all that stuff around together, mixes the acid and those enzymes together with the food to break them down. From there, um, the food is going to get the mixed up, broken down food is going to travel into the small intestines. Here again, those, um, those foods are going to be broken down some more and all the nutrients, particularly the proteins, um, uh, fats, carbohydrates here are gonna are gonna diffuse through the walls uh, of the small intestines into the bloodstream to be taken around the body. The small intestines actually have little hairs on them called villi, uh, which increase the surface area uh, and mean they can absorb more nutrients uh, during this process as well. Next, we have the large intestine where all the water will be extracted from the fruit, the food. Uh, the rectum is the end of the large intestine where this stuff is stored. Uh, before it can be expelled from the body through the anus. Now, if while you're eating, you aren't getting enough of the different nutrients, uh, you're gonna end up being underweight. Uh, being underweight is particularly unhealthy for our bodies uh, for a few different reasons. First of all, uh, it can mean that your immune system will end up being weaker. You will get ill more often because you won't have the energy and you won't be able to produce the things you need to in order to fight off disease. Because you haven't got enough carbohydrates, you won't have enough energy to do certain things as well. Because you haven't got enough energy, this will make you tired also. Um, you're probably also not gonna have enough vitamins and minerals, which means you're gonna have the issues that come along with not having enough of those in some cases. In extreme cases, people can end up with diseases like scurvy, um, but also if you've not got enough vitamin D, your bones will be weaker than they're supposed to be. And so being underweight can have serious issues based on those different things. If you're overweight, there are issues here as well. If you've got too much food in your body, um, you're taking in more energy than you require and your body will store that excess energy as fat underneath the skin. Uh, and this is why people who eat too much end up being overweight because they're storing more fat than they need to. This excess fat can lead to a number of different conditions, things like heart disease, strokes, uh, diabetes and some cancers. Having a stroke is where the fat builds up in the, in the, in the, in the veins, the arteries, uh, and blocks off blood to certain parts of the body, particularly the brain's the worst one, uh, and means that you then will lose function until that can be fixed. Uh, heart disease makes you more likely to have heart attacks and things along those lines, uh, and cancers are also an end result of this also. To check food to find out what nutrients they contain, we can do four different tests. The first of those tests is the test for starch. It involves us using a substance like iodine, 
Uh, iodine, you can see in the right hand image in this picture here, uh, in its normal color, which is a sort of reddish orange color. Uh, when you mix it with starch, anytime you mix it with food that has starch in it, that iodine will turn a dark blue black color like you can see in the left hand image in this picture here. There are two tests you can do for fats or lipids, they're also called sometimes. Uh, particularly fatty foods, if you get them and rub them onto filter paper, they'll make the filter paper go from being like normal paper, a white color, to going completely see-through. We can also mix them with ethanol, shake them in the test tube for a minute and then pour them into a test tube of cold water. And if fat is present inside these, that mixture will go a cloudy white color like you can see in the image I've placed here. If we're testing to check food for proteins, uh, we will get something called burette solution. And burette solution contains copper sulfate, and sodium hydroxide, and we mix this with the food in solution, so dissolved into a water, uh, and the burette solution will go from a blue color, like you can see in the bottle, to a purple color, like you can see in the beaker in the image of placed here. A negative test for this will keep that burette solution remaining blue. And finally, if we're checking for sugars, we would use Benedict solution, which starts off the color you can see here uh, in the left-hand image, uh, and you'd mix it with the sugar uh, and heat it in a water bath and if sugar is present it would go the orangey colour you can see on the right of this image. Yeah. You need to know about each of those different food tests so you can talk about how we test food to make sure it has the right nutrients in it for our diet. Thanks very much for watching, make sure you stay safe, stay alert, stay curious and subscribe.